If you have ever experienced a glitch in the Matrix and want to share your story, just go to asthereavendreams.com and click the button to send it my way. I would happily feature it. And of course, thank you. I've been lurking the Glitch in the Matrix subreddits for a while, and I recently learned about your podcast through another poster there. I was a bit hesitant at first because my event was just really weird and was something that I didn't really know what happened with, but I figured, why not put this out there into the world and let people know about it? Maybe someone else out there has had a similar experience and can help me to understand what the hell it was that actually happened. So, let me set the scene. It was a pretty normal and rather chilly morning in early winter. I remember that because I woke up and I felt colder than normal, to the point that I checked the thermostat, which is something that I never do, to see if it was set right. It was, so... I just shrugged it off and thought that it was me. I went to the bathroom for my morning routine, and I started brushing my teeth, and as I stood in front of the mirror, I noticed that my reflection was a little off. It was kind of like it was lagging a fraction of a second behind my movements, and that's really the only way I can think to explain it. It just seemed like I was moving and it was moving, but the two were no longer in sync. I rubbed my eyes thinking that I was just seeing things, but the lag persisted. I was starting to feel a little unnerved. I quickly brushed my teeth and then splashed some water on my face, hoping that it would help me to snap out of it. However, things only got worse from there. As I was drying my face, I glanced up at the mirror, and to my horror, my reflection seemed to just stop, like it was completely frozen, staring back at me with a completely unmoving expression. I slowly waved my hands, jumped around, and then even tried to physically touch the mirror, but my reflection would not move. It just stood there like a creepy statue, capturing me in that awkward moment of time. At this point, I was terrified. My heart was pounding in my chest. I was starting to hyperventilate and feeling a bit dizzy. I leaned out of the bathroom to call for my boyfriend, and I guess that I sounded freaked out, because he jumped up and ran into the hallway towards me. I waved him into the bathroom, and when he entered, he kind of looked around like, what? I motioned towards the mirror. He turned toward the mirror, and I looked up at the mirror at the same time, and, sure enough, it was normal. I could see myself moving like normal. When he looked at the mirror, he saw my reflection acting normally. My boyfriend laughed a bit under his breath and just shook his head like, Oh, you're crazy. I ended up kind of just standing there for a few moments and trying to get my grip on what that was. But I had to let it go because whatever it was was no longer happening. I tried to carry on with my day, but every single time I got a glimpse of myself in the reflection, like in a window, my phone screen, or whatever, I would get this disgusting cold chill down my spine. It was as if I was getting hit with adrenaline, like I was about to go into a spiral of panic. This nightmare persisted for the entire day, I felt completely out of sync with reality, like I had seen something that I wasn't supposed to see, and it was clawing at my brain. When I got home, I was exhausted, and I just wanted to go to bed, so I did. My boyfriend was worried, but I just told him that I wasn't feeling well and that I wanted to sleep. Thankfully, when I woke up the next day, everything was back to normal. My reflection followed my movements perfectly again, and I wasn't feeling weird anymore when I looked at myself. I still can't explain what happened, but it has made me question some things about our 
existence, I guess, because it felt like reality was out of sync with me, or vice versa. Has anyone else ever had something like this happen? Or do you have any theories on what could have caused this glitch in the Matrix? So, this glitch that I witnessed happened in June of 2022, when I was on a work trip. It still bothers me, and it makes me question it to this day. I work as a private stewardess on board a motor yacht. This job requires me to travel very often, so I spend a lot of time at Atlantis Resort on Paradise Island in the Bahamas. One day, when I was off, my crew and I decided to go to the beach that is part of the Atlantis Resort. Only people staying at the hotel or marina can access it. It was myself and two of my other crewmates who decided to go. Our boat was docked in the marina village, part of the resort, but the beach was about a 20-minute power walk through the hotel and casino and breezeways outside. And so we left the boat, and the first place we had to walk through was the casino. Mind you, there are a lot of stairs to climb just to get into it, it probably about 50, and many other stairs throughout the walk. These two crewmates are good friends of mine, and we're always talking and making jokes with each other. We talked pretty much the entire walk. As we were walking through the casino, I noticed a lady, maybe in her mid-thirties, standing near a machine with a stroller and digging through her purse looking for something. She stood out to me because I really liked the athletic dress and gym shoes that she was wearing. Although, I usually like a lot of people's outfits, so it wasn't a weird thing for me to notice. I didn't feel the need to point her out to my crewmates because they were both guys, and they wouldn't appreciate her outfit as much as I did. The three of us continue walking at a swift pace through the casino, the lobby, and the outside breezeway paths, with many random stairs. Eventually, after a solid 15 minutes of walking, we approach the kids' arcade-slash-daycare center, and as we walk past it, I was shook. The woman in the athletic dress and stroller was in front of us waiting in line at the daycare, as if she had been standing there for a while. In my mind, I thought that there was no way she could have gotten there before we did. There's just no way. There were way too many stairs for her to have done that by herself, especially with a stroller with a small child in it. What gets me is that it seemed as if she was standing there waiting for a bit. I thought about when we walked past her in the casino, she was rummaging through her purse, looking for a phone or something, and she had no intentions of leaving right after we passed. I didn't say anything to my crewmates when we walked past her, because I was making sure that it was definitely her. As soon as we walked past, one of my crewmates goes, Is it just me? Or was she in the casino when we left? I could not have been happier that he said that, because it was confirmation that I wasn't the only one who witnessed this. He and I both noticed her and thought of the exact same reasonings as to how it would have been impossible for her to have beat us there. It was a really strange coincidence, and I just don't think that she could have walked faster than the three of us, especially with the stroller to push and carry up and down the stairs. Since we spend so much time at Atlantis, we are for sure certain that the way we walked is the fastest way to get there. If there were any shortcuts, we would know about them. He and I still talk about how weird that encounter was. The whole time we were at the beach, we were discussing how the only logical explanation was that it had to be a glitch in the Matrix. Has anyone else experienced this or something very similar? It bothers me so much, and I need to know the truth.
Okay, so it's taken me a while to come to terms with what happened. And even now, I'm left with more questions than answers. I'm hoping that by sharing this story, someone may say, hey, that happened to me too. Or perhaps I can gain some insight into the nature of reality itself. And if not, maybe getting this story out into the world will do something good for my mental state. Let me start by giving just a little bit of background, probably not fully relevant. At the time that this happened, I was a university student living off campus with a couple of roommates. We were all pretty close, and would often hang out together when we had free time. Our apartment was situated in a fairly quiet residential neighborhood, and I would frequently walk to and from campus, which took about 20 minutes at most. One day, I had a late night study session at the library, and I decided to head home around a bit before midnight. The streets were obviously deserted, and the only sound was the distant hum of traffic on the highway. As I made my way through the familiar streets, just making my short trip from point A to point B, I kept getting this really weird feeling like something was off. It felt like I was being watched or stared at. I chalked it up to my overactive imagination and the eeriness of the empty streets and just continued on my way. As I approached an intersection, I noticed a woman standing on the opposite corner. I couldn't make out all of her details, but she had shoulder-length brown hair and a beige coat. I didn't recognize her, but I could tell that there was something unsettling about her presence. She seemed to be looking straight at me, and as our eyes met, I kind of felt sick to my stomach. I shook it off and just went ahead across the street, as I was planning, and continued on. However, as I rounded the next corner, I was met with a sight that made my heart skip a beat. That same woman was standing on the opposite corner, staring directly at me. I couldn't believe my eyes. There was no way that she could have reached that corner before me. At this point, I was really feeling a bit uneasy, so I decided to take a detour and cut through an alley that would lead me to a different, more populated street. I hoped that by changing my route, I could shake this odd feeling. Unfortunately, my plan did not work. Once again, at the next intersection, I ran into that same woman, and every time, she would look up and stare at me and give me that same nauseous feeling. By this point, I was starting to panic. I felt like I was trapped in some kind of messed up loop. It was seriously impossible for me to have run into this same person like this at numerous intersections, and honestly, the night air was starting to feel oppressive and suffocating. It was likely just panic, but it felt like I was being crushed under the pressure of the air. At this point, I decided to just make a run for it to get back to my home. I sprinted down the street, my heart pounding in my chest, and I struggled to take deep breaths. I swear, I could feel the woman's presence behind me. Like, she was chasing me as fast as I was running, but she was never there behind me. After sprinting at full speed, I ended up getting to a park that was connected to the property where our apartment was, and it was almost relieving. I knew what this was. I knew that this was close to home and that I was done. As I paused to catch my breath, I kept getting this weird urge to look back, and I really didn't want to, but I felt that I had to. I did. And of course, at the back edge of the park opposite from where I had entered, she was standing there, staring at me. To say that I was freaked out would be an understatement. I said screw it and ran to my building just thinking that getting home would be enough to break me away from this lady. When I arrived at my apartment, my roommates were still awake and I immediately shared my story with them. They listened with a mix of concern and disbelief, and we spent the rest of the night discussing various theories about what could have caused this glitch. One of them suggested that it could have been an hallucination, or maybe it was a set of triplets out there just really messing with people. 
but my other roommate was more into thinking that it was some kind of paranormal encounter or weird alternate dimension stuff. I don't know which it was, but it definitely felt more paranormal. Hence why I'm saying this was likely a glitch of some sort. It was like that woman was some kind of real-life Agent Smith or something, just watching me. In the days that followed, I was perfectly fine, but the memory of that woman kept kind of messing with me. I kept feeling like I should look over my shoulder and then she would be there. I only saw someone that looked like her one other time, at a Walmart of all places, but this woman didn't pay any attention to me at all. She was shopping, and she didn't notice me, so I don't think that she was the woman from that night. As time has gone on, I've become much less paranoid, but I still have so many questions. Who the hell was that woman? Why was she staring at me? And what was pretty much everything else that happened about that night? It was a really weird, terrifying glitch for me to go through, and I will honestly never forget how it made me feel to see her, and how each time it honestly felt worse. I may never know the answers to my questions, but one thing is certain. My encounter with the woman has seriously changed the way that I view reality. I now find myself questioning the very nature of our existence, and the delicate balance that holds our world together. And I can't help but wonder if, one day, I'll once again find myself coming up to an intersection, looking up, and see her standing there again. This is an unexplained phenomenon from about five years ago. My partner and I took a road trip from Florida to North Carolina and decided to drive straight through. We stopped once or twice for gas, and the car was always monitored by one of us. We had two suitcases in the back, and mine was at the bottom. When we arrived in North Carolina, we both had the distinct feeling that there was no way ten hours had passed. We both kept exclaiming that it felt like we went through a time portal, and we were confused at how quick the car ride felt. I remember actually trying to recount the audiobooks that we listened to, and to piece together how it was possible that ten hours had passed. Well, we arrive at the place that we're renting, and we put our suitcases in the room. While I'm in the shower, I hear my partner exclaiming and freaking out. I get out of the shower to see what it's about. He's crouching over the suitcase, utterly confused. The zipper is sealed shut with a plastic loop and two tiny metal keys. Like the keys that come with a diary, or perhaps a tiny lock on a brand new suitcase. There was no way to open the suitcase without breaking the plastic loop. He starts freaking out and asking the people in the house that we were renting if they were playing a trick on us. They look at us like we're crazy. Finally, we open the suitcase, and all my stuff is still in it. Okay, well, first of all, my suitcase was on the bottom of the two suitcases. Someone would have had to have gotten into our car while we weren't looking, and like I said, we never really left the car, and put this plastic loop with keys on it. And then, why would they choose the one on the bottom? And who would do this? This was an old suitcase that I had used many times, so it's not like something that I just never noticed was there. Second, even if it was, it was sealing the zipper closed. And I had even grabbed a sweater out of my suitcase during the trip. This is just a completely unexplainable mystery. I'll start this by saying that my mom and I are superstitious, and we believe in the paranormal and weird stuff, or things such as glitches. This happened to us yesterday, and we've told a few people, and they all think it's extremely weird and isn't possible. My mom and I were coming back from New York. 
We were on the highway and were going to take the Mansfield exit to go through town. All of a sudden, after a weird fog that lasted maybe 10 seconds, we were on this long road that we don't recognize. And the next exit is Sebring. Sebring is 18 minutes away from Mansfield. Sebring is also an exit coming back from the opposite way, which is further into Pennsylvania and nowhere near the New York border. We came up on the Sebring exits as if we were headed back from the opposite side of the state. We're both trying to put it together, and the last time we remember seeing was 420, of course. And we were never conscious of the time until it was 620. A few minutes after we got off at Sebring, we got off at the Elkland exit one of the first exits right outside of New York. Before we got back on the highway towards the Mansfield exit, when we went through the thick fog. I remember it because I said, holy crap, and when I saw how thick it was. But our conclusion is that the fog did something to cause the glitch, and now we're just confused and missing an extra hour of our lives. To put it in perspective even further, Coming back from New York, you almost immediately hit the Elkland exit. We got off there to go to a store, and we got back onto the highway so that we could get off at the Mansfield exit, which is a little bit after the Elkland exit. In order to get to the Sebring exit, we would have had to have passed two or three town exits. As I said, Sebring is 18 minutes away from Mansfield and there's no way that we could have gotten there in the span of five minutes. We came at the exit as if we were going back to Mansfield and Elkland. That's just impossible. We stayed on the highway, and we didn't make any turns or anything. It's just something that's really weird. This is one of the somewhat silly, yet still unexplainable glitches that I've experienced. My boyfriend and I went to a Pink Floyd laser light show. Yes, we're dorks, get over it. And there were two acts to the show. And the ushers gave everyone two different pairs of paper visual effect glasses, one for each act. We each received one black pair, which had the Dark Side of the Moon album art on it, and one white pair, which had the graphics from the Wall album. I was, accidentally, given two of the white pairs along with one black. At the end of the show, my boyfriend was looking for his pair of black glasses. He wanted to keep them as a free souvenir, and he didn't like the white ones as much. As we exited the dark theater, he realized he had somehow ended up with both of my white pairs of glasses, his black ones were nowhere to be found. I had already discarded my own. He shrugged and pocketed both the white ones anyways. Better than nothing. I decided to buy a t-shirt on the way out, so he stood by the exit doors and waited for me. There was a large crowd at the merchandise stand, so I was there for about ten minutes. He remained in the same spot the whole time, just scrolling through Twitter. Once I had purchased my t-shirt... I approached my boyfriend and reached for his hand so that I could hold it as we walked to the car. When he removed it from his pocket, he was shocked to find the missing pair of black paper glasses. All the more shocking, the white ones were suddenly nowhere to be found. I suppose it was a positive glitch, he got what he wanted, but it was creepy nonetheless. And for a second glitch this person had, they submitted it in the same uh, submission. I've worked in the same large hotel for six years, since the very day that it opened. There are 19 floors and hundreds of staff members, but only two service elevators. So, you can probably imagine that they need a whole lot of maintenance. They also have a nasty habit of malfunctioning. Usually, it's harmless, even familiar. There's a uh, boom... The polite elevator voice says, This elevator is out of service. 
and then it starts right back up again as if nothing happened. But every once in a while, someone will get stuck. And depending on what the problem is and how quickly help arrives, it could be a little while before they see the light of day again. There are, of course, failsafes in modern elevators to prevent them from dropping you 19 floors to your ultimate doom. But it's still frightening being trapped inside of a giant metal box, hundreds of feet above the ground. It happened to me once. I got stuck on the 17th floor, but I didn't panic. I knew that the chief engineer, and potentially also the fire department, would be on the way to set me free as soon as possible. So I waited patiently. But what I didn't know was that the entire building had lost power, not just the elevator. So shortly after the gears locked up, the lights also turned off. There's a different kind of darkness that exists within the thick metal walls of a dead elevator, where there are no natural sources of light. I couldn't see my hand in front of my face. Everything was quiet and still and black. It was off-putting, to say the least. And suddenly, the number display lit up again. It read V12. And that was very strange because I've never seen the letter V anywhere on the display before, and I certainly was not on the 12th floor. But before I could make sense of it, the doors opened with a mechanical whoosh. My jaw dropped. I was in the lobby. For six years, I've been riding the same shifty, shaky elevators, and I'm accustomed to the sound of the heavy doors sliding open the shuddering noises in the shafts, and the very noticeable jerk that happens below your feet as an elevator begins to move. There is nothing smooth, quiet, or subtle about these old machines. Therefore, there is absolutely no way that I could have unknowingly descended from the 17th floor all the way to the lobby. It just isn't possible. I did not feel one single jolt, did not hear one clank. I felt like I was emerging from a horror movie, and suddenly, I couldn't help but imagine what sinister things might have been lurking there with me in the impenetrable darkness, while I vulnerably waited for assistance. Maybe it was a glitch in time, or space, or something else altogether. Suffice to say, I can now understand why some people are afraid of elevators. A few years ago, I decided to spend a few days in New York, so as I'm preparing to leave, I do all the jobs that needed doing, washing, clearing the rubbish, etc. On my return, I get ready to go back to work and I can't find my name badge. It's a uh, two by one anywhere. I check all the flat surfaces, empty cupboards more than once, look under the bed. For the life of me, I cannot remember where I put it. And I'll get charged for a new one if I can't find it. And fast forward three weeks, I see the bin in the kitchen needs emptying. So I take off the lid and remove the bin bag. And as I look at the bottom of the bin, there is my name badge. Plain as day. To this day, I still have no idea how it got there, as the bin is on the other side of the room from any of the other flat surfaces. The story takes place in 2020, and since this event, I have not been the same. Since my best friend Mike was my oldest friend since I was five, and was 33 now, I can remember this like it was today. I heard a knock on my door and saw that it was Mike, but I have never seen Mike this upset in my life. So I asked, How are you, brother? He doesn't answer. It was an awkward silence for a second, so I look at his face, and he looks devastated. Sad and lost, and he was stoic like me. I don't even know where to begin. So I tell him to take his time and ask if he wants a beer. He nods and composes himself, and then he says, 
they're all gone. I asked who. He responds with, everyone. Mike had two girls and a wife, and they'd been married since 2010, happily, and me being shocked, thinking she left and took the kids, so I started comforting with the hug and asked what happened. And after about 30 seconds, he says, it started a week ago. I called my parents to tell them happy anniversary, and it wasn't them. It was an elderly couple that had just gotten the phones. And yesterday, my wife constantly argued with me that we didn't have kids until I woke up, and everything changed. They vanished. Out of shock, I say, you're joking. But if he was, I would have known it. He had this look of deep sadness and dread on his face that I've never seen before or since. He looked me right in the eyes and said something I'll never forget. I'm doomed. That gave me the chills. If this was a prank, it was an elaborate one, and had no payoff. But how was this possible? I believed him, and I offered him a smoke because we both needed one at this time. He wasn't a smoker though, and I only smoked socially, and I only smoked socially. So I give him one, and a minute later he leaps onto me and burned me. I was like, what the hell are you doing? That hurt. He sits down and then enjoys his cigarette and says, I'm sorry, but please don't forget me. At that moment, I got over it. This man was my brother in every sense of the word. Crash here tonight, I said. And after an hour of trying to get him down, I'm ready for bed. I get him some covers and tell him goodnight. And he says, I love you, bro. And I say it back to him. The next morning, I go out to check on him, and he's gone. So I check out to see his jeep, but it's gone too. I'm perplexed. So I eat, grab my phone, scroll through my contacts. His number is not in my phone, which isn't possible. Nobody can get into my phone because it's fingerprint protected. So where did it go? I start pacing, and after a while, I think to myself... Was this a prank? Where did he go? Did he vanish too? So, I decide to go to his house, thinking to myself, there has to be a logical, reasonable explanation here. I get to his house, and I knock. An older woman, with gray hair and glasses, and a tiny dog, answers the door, and says, Can I help you? I try to stay friendly, and I say, Is Mike here? She looks confused says, no, there's no mic here. I'm shocked. I close the door and say, oh, thank you, ma'am. I'm just confused. What was happening right then? How was he here yesterday and then gone off the earth the next? After an hour, I think to myself, you know what? I'll go look at my scrapbook at my mother's house. And I did. But I'm terrified. There was no mic in my scrapbook. It still gives me chills to this day. I try not to think about the fact that I have all of these memories of somebody that was mysteriously blinked out of existence. Maybe he did exist, but was moved to a different timeline? Or just a glitch? I don't know. But I do know that as chilling as this sounds, I still do have a mark on my arm where he burned me. This is a bit wacky. For context, my friend and I had brought our laptops and chargers to a class yesterday, and then after we left the class, she realized that she didn't have it, her charger, and we looked around for it but couldn't find it. I don't remember putting anything in my backpack except my own charger and my homework. This morning, I don't remember taking out any chargers except for my own. I know it's mine because it isn't neatly wrapped up. So, this morning, there was no charger on the floor, nothing there. After school, I place my backpack down with an eyesight of this mystery charger, and there's nothing there. I haven't even touched my backpack after I put it down this afternoon, 
and I definitely did not take out that charger. But then a few minutes ago, there was a charger, neatly wrapped, lying with the name side down on my floor. And it's neatly wrapped. I definitely don't remember neatly wrapping up a charger. So I pick up the charger and flip it around, and wouldn't you know it, bam, it's my friend's charger. My mom suggested that maybe it got stuck in a backpack pocket or something, but I never took any chargers out of my backpack except my own last night. And it would have been impossible for it to have gotten stuck in a pocket anyways. If it was hanging off my backpack, then they would have seen it, considering she walked behind me in the hallway for a bit. Anyways, if one of us had accidentally packed it into my backpack, it would have gotten tangled with my charger and came out with it, which did not happen, because last night only my charger came out of the backpack. And even if it did, I wouldn't have placed it in the middle of the floor upside down. I have literally no explanation for how this happened, but at least I found their charger. So that, my lovely friends, was this week's Glitch in the Matrix Collection. It's kind of nice to get back to the three-week setting here that I have. Hopefully you all appreciate and enjoyed last week's uh, video a day thing I did. It was a lot of work, but I really think it was worth it and I really enjoyed it, honestly. It's a lot of fun pushing myself to do more work because I love doing this, so I don't know. I, I, I work best whenever things are kind of hectic. I think. I, I think that's always been the case, so it's it's kind of hard to just explain, really. But anyways, we're back to the Monday, Wednesday, Saturday collection here. And, yeah. We may do another week where I do a video a day. Heck, we may do a month where I do a video a day and just kind of see how it works out. I don't know. We'll see. I did ask a question on my community tab about that, so if you want to go answer that, that'd be appreciated. If not, that is okay, too. Hopefully you all enjoyed this collection of Glitch in the Matrix stories. I did. Good, creepy glitch stories today. Some good ones. Definitely enjoyed it. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button. If you're new to the channel and liked what you heard, please consider subscribing. That's the best thing you can do for the channel, honestly. Other than watching and commenting. You can also do super thanks, which is a tip to the channel. Patreon or memberships down below where you join. You can get early access to content like this as long as it's up early. Last week I was up early. This week I am on time again. I will try to get the Wednesday video up early as, as well to fix that schedule. So, yeah. Um, that's about all I can think of. I don't have anything else to really talk about today. It's Monday, so a little tired. Throat's a little scratchy. I think the weather's really messing with me because it got warm and cold again, and I hate when it does that. My sinuses hate it too, so is what it is the day goes on we will survive my friends so the other thing we do here on mondays is the word of the week which is where i give you a word you take the word you put the word in the comment section down below in a sentence then your comments are up on the screen such as right now and several moments prior to now where everyone who used the word secret last week now has their comment on the screen with one exception you know who you are. Yeah. Um, thank you to each and every single one of you who left the comments on left the comments in the in the section with the word with the word of the week last week. Blech. Thank you, is what I'm trying to say. You are amazing. Your interactions help the video go further. And yeah, I appreciate it more than I can say. Now, moving on to this week's word of the week. We're gonna try a bit of a different word, not one that's that's quite so simple or used in everyday conversation. I want to try to use um, more complicated words every once in a while. Uh, somebody mentioned that I should use complicated words, and I agree. But the thing is, last time I tried to use to use complicated and uncommon words, nobody participated. So, I don't know. Expect me to sprinkle in some more complicated words here now, every now and then. Anyways, this week's word of the week is trivial. T-R-I-V-I-A-L. It means of little significance or value concerned with or involving unimportant matters, or superficial, or of relating to or being the solution of an equation in which every variable is equal to zero. If you can use that last one, bonus props. So, anyways, 
that's the word of the week. Thank you to everyone who listens to this point. Everyone else, um, well, you didn't hear me say this, so, yeah. Um, much love, friends. I do hope you all have a beautiful day. I hope I see you on the next one, but until then, remember, you are loved, you are valid, you are important, you are the best you that you can be. Never let anyone tell you otherwise, and please never forget it. And until I see you again, friends, much love, and sleep well.